In this lecture, we would be understanding the nucleosome model. So what exactly is it? We are trying to understand how DNA is being wrapped around the histones. Now histones are the proteins and these histones, let's first talk about histones. These histones are present in various ways. So the common histones that are seen are H1, you would have H1, uh, then you would have H5, you would have H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. Now H2, H3 and H4 are known as the core histones. However, you have H1 and H5 which are known as linker histones. The structure of linker histone is something like this. So the core histones always exist in dimer. That is, they do not exist as single histone or single protein. They exist as two. So they are therefore called as dimer. If it exists as one, it is monomer. Now, understanding why uh, these H1 and H5 are different from the others. So H1 and H5, basically when we talk about any of the core histones, you have these histones which are existing as dimer as we already said. And there is three uh, alpha helix which is linked with two loops so you can see two loops here and three alpha helix so you would have three helix that would be seen and two loops that are there and this allows interaction between the various dimers that are there we would be understanding this in a while as we proceed now when we are talking about a human diploid cell this diploid cell has how many pair of chromosome that you already know it has 23 23 pair of chromosome now each of this has nearly 1.8 meters of DNA that is present. Now this DNA, where is it present? It is wrapped around the histone. Histone is the basis for mainly the lysine and arginine. Now lysine or arginine, both of those are important because both of these are what? These are alpha amino acids which are the basis for biosynthesis of protein. Now when we are talking about biosynthesis of protein and formation of histone, this histone is being wrapped around by the DNA. Now when this is being wrapped around by DNA, we are understanding the structure of a chromatin. So chromatin basically is composed of what? DNA plus the protein. So protein is what? Protein is histone and then you have the DNA and together is what is known as chromatin. So this is what we call as chromatin. Now let's understand how it actually works. So we have the four core histones that we have talked about. I'll leave aside the linker histones for a while. So the core histones is H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. So we have depicted those with different colors. Now each of these histones are individually called as what? They are called as monomer. So in the first line as we can see these are monomers. Now what happened is I have brought two of these so two orange, two blue, two green and two yellow as you can see here. So what is happening is dimer is being brought and as we said the core histones always exist as dimer. So two of those would be there. So two H3, two H4, two H2B and two H2A would be there. Now when each of these single molecules are there we call it as monomer when there are two of those we call it as dimer when these dimer come together we call them as tetramer and when there are all these four and double copies of all these four so this would be an octamer eight and all so this is what is known as histone octamer now this octamer is being surrounded by a DNA. Now when DNA surrounds, it surrounds in this fashion such that on the two edges you have a V shape that is there. Now this is how you can see the structure. It's similar to a kind of fish structure that you can see. So all histone being inside and you would have a DNA being coiled around it. Now each of this histone would have two terminals. 
one terminal would be the n terminal the other terminal would be the c terminal so histones would have the c terminal and the n terminal that would be there and both of them would have kind of interactions that would be there these interactions could be in the form of hydrogen bonds or they could be in the form of salt bridge that could exist between these two now when you have this arrangement on the side towards the v you would have the H2A and H2B that would be arranged and on the opposite side you would have the H3 and the H4 that would be arranged. So that structure is again very very important and as we said since all of those have N terminal that is there and this is the N terminal of H3 and H4 which is more prone to any kind of chemical modifications that are there so if you want to methylate it if you want to uh, acid dilate it or if there is any kind of phosphor relations uh, those would be very easily seen on the h3 and the h4 so that is a kind of wrapping of the dna around the histone and this is what is a chromatin as we already said and also very very important the further coiling of this chromatin is what leads to the formation of chromosome. So this was a very basic understanding about the packing of histones within a DNA and the structure of chromatin the nucleosome model as it is rightly called as we would be covering many more interesting lectures under genetics so stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead.